Yakui, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Just in time for the tier list. Alrighty. So, Multi Blood Type Lumina has been out for a minute. It hasn't even been out for a month quite yet. So, these are still early impressions. Nothing is set in stone. So, take this with a grain of salt. This is just my opinion of playing thus far. So, first and foremost, I think maids are overrated. That's just my opinion. I think solos are better. I think maid duo is overrated, though. So, first and foremost... First and foremost, Shiki S tier. I will give a reason why I put the character where I put them. Uh, Shiki is just a very, very strong character overall. Um, the Nanaya install is actually insane. It has an instant low, instant overhead mix. Uh, Shiki's ID is really low. Doesn't go very far, but creates a lot of good mix opportunities. So, Shiki in that regard is very, very strong. Has solid neutral, really, really good buttons. Charge C is an unblockable. It actually gets faster in uh, Moon Drive, which I did not know. I found that out yesterday. So, gets faster in Moon Drive, which is actually pretty nutty. <laughs> I didn't know about that. But that's very, that's another really good thing about Shiki. Shiki doesn't actually have a weakness. Shiki's one of those characters with like no weakness, just pretty just well-rounded character and has an uppercut, you know, like so it's not like you could just pressure him all day like he just has well-rounded tools and I mean, look at 236B, it literally clips you. Like 236B is just ridiculous. Never going pro. What is up? So, yeah. Shiki. Shiki's crazy. Completely crazy. <coughs> okay. So, from here, where do I go? Instead of being a jack of all trades, he's a queen of all trades. So, here, I put Miyako second. I think Miyako has literally the best offensive pressure in the game. She's one of the only characters where when she gets next to you or puts you on a block string, you're automatically on a mix-up. Like, you have to guess cross-up elbow, you have to guess throw, you have to guess overhead. Like, you're guessing a lot. On top of when she knocks you down off of, like, throw setups, you're always in a 50-50 in a guess. So, she's really, really, like, the only weakness, because she's really, really hard to block. The only weakness she has is her range. Her range, no projectile, stuff like that. But, like, I mean, she could cover that because she's going to get in, you know? Like, her matchup spread, like, by chart is, like, really good. The, uh, the only character that even gives her remote trouble at neutral is, like, uh, V-Love. And that's pretty much like the only character that even gives her trouble at all at neutral. Oh, you got number one CL on Xbox? Nice. You learned a couple tricks from me? Hey, that is what, uh, what's up. I'm glad I can help. I'll be honest, I thought Miyako would be lower tier due to her lack of range, but I couldn't have been any more wrong. Yeah, she's really fast too. She just has a lot of good tools. And even then, with zoning, she has a cartwheel special move that goes through projectiles. So, yeah, she's uh, really good. And she has an uppercut in this game. And like I said, she has unreactable mix. Like, cross-up elbow, uh, overhead, dealing with her throws. Uh, her jumping attacks are pretty hard to deal with <coughs> because of she can do uh, JCB. She can even do JCBA on somebody coming down. Like, she's pretty ridiculous to block. So, she's very strong. And she has 
arguably the best throw in the game because it's a standing throw that gives her a combo. So she, very strong character. Okay, so who would I put next? Next, let's see. Hmm. Now this one is where stuff starts to get a little rough. So the reason why I'll put Noel right here, Noel's normals are actually really, really good. Like if you're used to playing uh, footsies in any fighting game with range, you'll notice that her button placements are like super good and she can hit you from ranges where you want to be able to hit her but you can't and the ability to reverse gatlings her her strings put her still at a very optimal range to hit you but you still can't hit her on top of she does have keys that hit at really good angles and her damage output, she's dishing out like 4k on basic combo. Like, basic hit, she can get 4k. And 4k in this game is a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. So, with that being said, you can't heat against this character because of her range as well. So you can't even heat. You really feel like you can't move against her. On top of her moon skill overhead, uh, 6BC, I believe, is super strong. It's it's either 6BC or 3BC. Uh, it's like super, uh, super strong as an anti-air as well. Not just a button check, but as an anti-air, when people get IED happy... Like, she can knock you out there. She literally can swat you out there like a fly. And goes back to her damage. Her damage output is actually pretty insane. On top of the way she pressures you and the range she controls. And she really doesn't have a, a blaring weakness beyond, like, I don't believe she has a meterless reversal. She has to use meter. That would be like her biggest flaw. Like just not being able to wake up. However, you're generally going to always have a bar. Generally speaking. So I think she's really, uh, really strong. Japan has pretty much caught on to her. In general. And they've been putting her pretty high on the tier list. But um, based on my opinion and how I feel about the character, I think she's really strong, really damaging, really footsie based. So if you like a character that can control space, uh, that mid range, if you if you have a character that can control that mid range and you like that, and a character that dishes out a lot of damage, then she's definitely your gal. Okay, so next. See, these two are kind of hard to place low key. So I'm going to put Kohaku S because one thing about Kohaku is, again, we go back to the, the whole neutral aspect. Her neutral is, uh, it's almost unmatched. Like her slicer special move, like that shit is so good. Like the Johnny special move is like super good. It can keep you out of the air. It keeps you honest on the ground. The, um, the A version is actual low. 
on top of Cactus Oki, like, Cactus Oki is still really good. It forces a reaction because either A, she throws it late and throws you. Uh, you can't match or you're going to get hit. And she can throw Shimmy you right there. So, I mean, the smarter move would be take the throw. But, like, how many throws can you take, you know? Her range is actually ridiculous. Her uh, 2C is really good. Her JB is really good as an uh, air to air. Her JC charge, I mean, y'all fought people plenty of times to just do JC. JC is really good. And you can do it instant. It's not an overhead if you do it instant. However, you can do it instant and then fall down with more overheads. I think I would have put Hisui over Kohaku. Hisui is strong. Hisui's close, but I think Hisui might be A. Yeah, her range is actually ridiculous. She's always safe. Reverse Gatlin allows for her to just be at this, like I said, kind of like Noel, where she's at this range where she can hit you and you can't hit her. She's really, really dangerous. And like I said, with Cactus Oki, you have to respect it. And Plant Oki, you have to respect it. Like, all of her her summons, you have to respect. Like, shielding is not always the way out. And she's just dangerous. Like, with range and Oki, and her being able to hit you from, like damn near full screen with a slicer especially the the aerial version where you can anti-air with it if you get a counter hit bounces them off the wall to like 4.4k into oki like she makes you guess a lot so i think i'll put her s and then after that Hmm. Let's see. What's up, nah, 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 nah? She gets top tier? Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. So then we're gonna put... And this will be my last S tier character. So, Arcuit. I think Arcuit right now is very slept on. First of all, her JC is definitely the best JC in the game. Definitely the best JC, uh, JC in the game. You're agreeing so far? What is up, Tempest? So... Yeah, nobody said she's uh, S tier. I, I believe it. I believe she is. And like I said, y'all can take this with a grain of salt because it's just kind of like my view of the game. So it's very interesting to get other people's perspective on the game. So everybody's not agreeing the same way. Uh, I think that Ark is very strong. Like I said, I think she has the best JC in the game. Her JC is actually ridiculous. Her damage output is really, really strong for what she dishes out. And... She's a very, she's another one that's very well-rounded, like Shiki a little bit, uh, very well, well-rounded, uh, has an unblockable as well, not as good as Shiki's, hers is a little more slow, but I feel like hers is a little more ambiguous, because you're not ready for it, and her DBZ super, I don't know what the super's called, forgive me, where she hits you like, you know, four, four times, five times, and she gets that set up off the super jump. Like, that setup is actually unblockable. Like, you literally cannot block it. She has way too many layers off of it. Way too many layers off of it. That's her best super. She has way too many layers off of that shit. Way too many. Like, you're you're actually going to get hit, and you're going to get looped right back into the same super. And shielding is definitely not the answer. On top of her Rekkas 
are so damn good in this game. Not only can you stagger them, you can put delays on them, but uh, you also can whiff punish with them. I don't see too many players doing that, but whiff punishing with her records is actually super strong. And in any fighting game where you can whiff punish with records, uh, that character is pretty dangerous. Karen from Street Fighter Alpha 3, Karen in Street Fighter 5, is locked behind V Trigger. But that's why it's locked behind V-Trigger, because Rekka's are just too strong and powerful. Fei Long also was top tier. Like, it's, it's really hard to play around a Rekka, a Rekka character when they have Rekka's. Not like Saber's Rekka, but like Arcuit's Rekka is like super hard to play around. I think overall... And Malik, I get what you're saying. I think overall, because she's well-rounded and she, like, has an uppercut and that DBZ super is probably one of the best supers in the game just to set up quick Oki that you're not going to be able to block. And her buttons are really, really, really strong, too. Like, it's not like she can't whip punish you. She's really strong. I, I think she's S. I think she's S because I'm going to only do S and A. Like, everybody's S and A. B and C and D aren't, shouldn't even be here. Like, I'm only do S and A. <laughs> so, I'm going to place her right there. And then after this, we're going straight to A. Because I think those five are straight S. Uh, after that, we're going to do... Coma? I think Coma's right here simply because Coma has armor. Armor always makes players play different. Coma will always make players play different with armor. On top of Coma has a command grab, so will always force a reaction from you. No matter what you want to do, you have to play Coma's game. Because the fact that Coma does have an uppercut, Coma has armor. Coma has a command grab. All of these things force you to play into Coma's game. The The reason why Coma wouldn't be S and Coma's A is because Coma, the, the way to shut down Coma, you have to know option selects. Yeah, Coma does a lot of damage too. You have to know option selects. If, if you know OS's to get around like Wake Up Super and... Wake up super, uh, you can parry the uppercut if you're frame perfect on the option select. I'm pretty sure every character has a setup where you can do it. We just gotta keep labbing. But, uh, wake up armor super sucks. And then just being able to OS this character where this character is forced to block with safe jumps and OS's. Uh, Koma has to play a different game. And Coma, not the fastest at neutral. Buttons are, uh, air buttons aren't that great. And the only thing people generally do with Coma is, like, JC. I mean, it's pretty slow. Coma's buttons, air buttons could actually be better. So, with that being said, not the strongest air game and pretty slow on the ground as well. But does have good, you know, set play and has armor that you have to play around. So that will always change things. That'll always change things. When you have to play another character's game, that'll always put them in a pretty good tier. And Coma does force that. But like I said, pretty slow in the air and on the ground. And can be committal with the command grabs. Because they don't do that much damage, you know? So it's pretty committal. So next we are going to do So we're going to do this. Uh I think in my opinion solos are better uh just because the ability to wake up cuz solo <coughs> uh, solo kohaku 
can actually wake up. You can, you can like option select and you can do all this crazy shit, but the fact that it's still invincible and she has that option is still goaded. And she can get up. In the, the duo, she cannot. You would have to do something a little bit more crazy. You would definitely have to do something a bit more crazy. And like Hisui, going back to Hisui while Hisui's right here, you get the ability to just item toss. And item toss is actually super good. It controls the neutral very well. And you don't have that in the duo. Like you have it as an assist, but you don't actually have it. That's the problem. Like if you had it, uh, if you had it with duo or uh, the May duo, I felt like the May duo would definitely be over the solos. But in my opinion, like the solos are just better. I would just rather play Kohaku or rather play Hisui versus playing them um, both. Yeah, like there's some unblockables and new tech flying around but like first of all that unblockable i have not i have yet to see it in tournament play what's up steady i have yet to see that shit in tournament play so twitter clips don't like that does nothing for me like twitter clips do nothing for me until i see all of this shit in real match looped i don't care about it i'm asleep you fought the unblockable setup uh yesterday yeah i would have to fight somebody doing it to me because, in my opinion, I've just seen it in Twitter clips. And you would have to get it frame tight for it to even be unblockable, you know? Like, it would be more of a hard-to-blockable situation. But it would have to be frame tight. But yeah, Hisui, item toss would just put her there. But I, I think her neutral is very strong as well. Uh, being able to put the dust over your head controls this really, really good angle. Being able to do, like, four overheads and... Uh, IED pressure is like super strong. Her buttons are good. Her uh, reverse beats are good. She's kind of hard to block. Uh, she has a lot of unseeable mix. Uh, steady, basically, uh, the duo Kohaku and Hisui, they have an unblockable setup where you can do. You can basically do Hisui, uh, call Hisui to do an overhead. And make Kohaku do a low. The low slicer. So. But yeah. I definitely think. That. The solos are better. I mean I could be biased. A little bit. Because I do play Miyako. And I don't. I don't struggle versus the duo. Just because of the rush down aspect. And not being able for them to wake up. But when I fight solo kohaku i definitely like that matchup is a lot harder well steady they can actually frame tight make it uh unblockable it's possible to make an unblockable frame like where you can't block it you literally can do it on the computer and put them to all block and they'll get hit so it's possible to make it unblockable but like i said it would have to be frame tight like lowane's is like hard to blockable So you would have to do it like frame tight to make it like a true unblockable. So I think that kind of categorizes why I feel like this is it. And I definitely feel Kohaku's definitely better than Hisui. Like Kohaku's neutral is definitely better than Hisui. Definitely better. Her range, her buttons, and what she's going to get with the hit. Like Hisui is good, but Hisui... I just feel like Kohaku is just definitely a, the better sister in this game. Yeah, I mean, that... I mean, you could say that about a lot of things, though. Uh, nine. You could say that about a lot of things in fighting games. If it exists, people will do it. Because Marvel 2, Sentinel... Like, Sentinel fly-on-fly -fly combos exist. But how many people can do them? And if one person on Earth can do it and nobody else can, then at that point, it is what it is. Because I'm not going to fight that one person in every single tournament, you know? Like, or if one person can do this frame tight but nobody else can, 
that one person is not gonna make like change my opinion you know like it would have to be a lot of people doing it to where it's accessible to everyone or everyone like it doesn't even have to be easy but it has to be something that nobody every time i watch a made player they're not doing it and there's a reason why because it's also about the spacing of where uh hisui is at the time of the combo and where you are at on the screen because you just can't do it anywhere on the screen like it is definitely uh it definitely matters where you're at on the screen yeah, Kohaku, you can get hit on accident by Kohaku. <laughs> you can definitely get hit uh, hit on accident by Kohaku. So, my next character I would put... Hmm... Roa. So, Roa... Roa, in my opinion, has the best projectiles in the game, period. Better than Vlog because like Roa shit is fast and it bounces you and then it just goes straight into super into a setup. And that's the difference. Like it goes straight into super into a setup. Like and the fact that that projectile exists makes you play a completely different game. And lightning uh like lightning bolt, you don't want to be caught in the air. Versus it, uh, Roa has a lot of unblockable setups. So you definitely don't want to get caught sleeping in the air because you're just going to get hit guaranteed. So you have to shield. Put you in these, like, shield wars where you have to shield just to be comfortable against Roa. And in my opinion, that's in Roa's favor. Roa has a uh, really, really good IED pressure. Like, you have to respect it or you will get blown up. Super good IED pressure. Um, good reverse beats. Good projectiles. Solid damage output. Oki can be scary. Yeah, Roa. Roa's kind of out here with the projectiles. So that's the biggest thing that sticks out is like the projectiles and the neutral that uh, Roa controls with the projectiles. Because you're not going to shield every projectile. It's just not possible. And Roa's chip damage is good too. You can set up automatic chip setups. Like I think that that's another thing people aren't talking about with Roa. Automatic chip setups. People aren't really talking about automatic chip setups. Like people are so focused on trying to get the hit. Sometimes it's about setting up guaranteed chip. So I think that's uh, really strong about Roa. Is the projectiles, ID pressure, the Oki. Uh, always getting Oki off of that super. The electricity super. Okay, so we only got five other characters left. I would say... Akia... Like, I, could, I wish I could put Akia higher... I just can't yet because I know she has the potential. <laughs> Bottom five, baby, let's go. I know Akia has the potential to be one. Of, she actually has the potential to be one of the best characters in the game. She actually does. It's just not unlocked yet. And I know it's possible. I know it's possible. She definitely has it. <laughs> Akia B. I'm, I'm going to put everybody S or A because I just feel like everybody's super, super strong, right? Um, I think Akia, Akia, Malik, Akia got the juice, it's just, people right now are still figuring out, she has a lot of stuff, and she's more of an advanced character to play, that's, that's why she's taking a while to, uh, to figure out, cause some characters don't develop fast, you know, some characters take a while, see Viper in Street Fighter, she took a while, Gan in Street Fighter, took a while, some characters don't develop off uh, off jump. Gen was definitely top tier. Gen and C Viper were super top tier, but they took a while to develop. Like people had to uh, like learn how to play them. And Akia is one of those characters where she has a lot of setups and set play, 
And she has a lot of ways to bait out shield. And her air to air is really good too. And that's kind of the thing where it's like the more the game develops, because I just seen a, a crazy side swap combo today, and I seen this crazy long ass like combo. Like it was kind of impractical, but bits and pieces of it were practical. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, you know? <laughs> I think over time, Akia actually over time could move like around here ish over time like around here she could definitely move up here but for now i know it's possible but the potential just hasn't been unlocked yet it's just not there yet not yet okay so next definitely cl so cl very very basic character she gets straight to the point she doesn't have a lot of crazy like mix-ups and stuff like not like an overhead or anything like that however her keys are really good because uh they come out pretty fast she can whip punish you with them she could just throw them to control neutral she could force you to want to shield it and uh vanish attack she has a lot of ways to make you want to do something with her keys. That's really good. She has a cross up, uh, cross up B. Reminds me of like a Street Fighter Ken cross up, which is really strong. Uh, kind of hard to block on some uh, setups that make it very ambiguous. So she can be kind of tricky on certain setups. And her super, I don't know what it's called. CL is S tier. I've seen CL S tier on some tier list too. She's really, she's really, she really is strong. I just think some other uh, of the other characters kind of outclass her. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, she's one of those characters where. I just feel like she's good, but other characters outclass her. I think she's outclassed. She's really basic, and she actually does a lot of damage. Her more advanced combos do a lot of damage, too. And I've seen Moke uh, put in a lot of work with CL here recently. So she's, and like her being right here doesn't mean anything beyond, I think that he's better. I think that she's better. I think that she's better. I think that she's better. And I think that she's better. CL, while strong, I think that these characters are definitely better. And I think that these characters might have like one or two tools better. And this one just has potential because like I said, she could go like up here easily. But the, the potential just isn't uh, quite unlocked. But her neutral is really, really good. Like, super good. And her, like I said, her super, that super, I don't know what it's called. But her super... Where she like flies through you. That Oki that she gets is actually ridiculous. It's like Roa's. Roa has like the same concept. And supers like that are super good. Because you're going to hit it in a match. And that could be a potential next hit. And because of that. Uh, those situations are super strong. Oh it's EX Halo. Okay. Yes yeah, EX Halo. Yeah that super is really good. Okay, so we only got three characters left. So definitely Wark. And I'll go ahead and... Uh... So that's how that will line up. Wark. Wark, to me... She could have potential in the long run. Right now, I don't... She does good damage. She can be a little tricky with some setups. She can bait you out. To like shield and stuff. And she does get a good setup off of her uh, air throw. 
I saw Lord Knight doing a pretty pretty good setup that I don't really see uh, work players doing off of the air throw. So I think that she's good. Her neutral is good. I like her neutral. I think her neutral forces a reaction. Her aerial buttons are like super, super good as well. Her range on her normals are just good in general. So she's really good at challenging. But that just goes back to her neutral. I think her neutral is super, super strong. But I just feel like where she's lacking is... She is forced to only play neutral. I don't feel like she has anything like super scummy or super like cheap about her. Like that just would change my mind on the character. If that makes sense. Like for example Shiki. Shiki has this unblockable. Shiki has Nanaya mode. Miyako has like literally unblockable mix. The moment she gets near you, you panic. Noelle has these ridiculous buttons. She easily gets 4K. <coughs> like, Kohaku, all this range, easy confirms into Oki. And then it's like, work. she's working for that hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, she has to work for it. She's super basic. She's fair. Like, she has to work for that hit. When it comes to getting that hit, she's working for that hit. And when she gets it, she can capitalize and she's very um like she relies on super a lot if i'm not tripping a lot of the confirms i see all in in that air super like she's like super reliant on using her uh bar that's another thing like, her air super, yeah, it gives more plus frames on the Oki. But she does have a good air throw uh, mix. With, like, low air throw. But, yeah, she's really reliant on certain parts of the game that I think the other characters don't have to engage in. And then, uh, when we talk about V-Law, um, this character is really good. Masoma is definitely putting this character on the map. Like I said... Don't think because these characters are right here that they're bad or can't win. Because all these characters in this game can win. They're super balanced. But when it comes to Big V. Big V is kind of out here. Like, and by out here, I mean tallest character in the game. Real easy to hit. Real big target. One of the best neutrals in the game, though neutral is actually insane that's one thing about big v what's up nimbus also coma a yeah i think coma's a i think with i think with option selects like i feel like if you're option selecting a character and i think that the character is committal like you have to commit to what you want to do with him and i think that that'll put him in a uh I think that'll put him in like A. I think if he wasn't so committal and slow, then he would be a little better. But I just feel like he's committal. But I definitely respect the S tier because most people do put him S tier. So I can see both sides, right? Uh, but yeah, Big V is like one of those characters where the neutral is unmatched, range is unmatched, can set up mad unblockables if you jump. So the character is super scary. Even uh, V can definitely rush down as well. Like, the character does not have to just run from you. The character can definitely rush you down. <clears throat> definitely rush you down. So, the fact that doesn't uh, that he doesn't just have to run, he can rush you, gives him a wide variety of options. And then, when he picks... When he picks to uh, like picks and chooses to zone you, he he has that option, you know. Are you fall Alps, yeah, Alps is solid. Yeah, he's aggravating. That's that's the perfect term. Like he's a very aggravating character. It's not like he's like super good at uh, what he's doing. However, it's very aggravating to get around, and you know you have to shield because the chip damage adds up. 
So you have to make a move, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, but one thing that uh, stands out, he has the best 3C in the game. His 3C is actually like, it's literally probably projectile properties because when, I'm not saying it's going to clash with your projectile, but what I'm saying is like, when you vanish, it will hit you. Like the 3C will win. It's not like it has invul. It'll just win. And other characters, if you try to 3C a vanish, you might get counter hit. You might get hit. It might trade. Some crazy shit will happen. And but and then exactly. So if v always had ice, if he always had ice, he'll probably be up here. He'll be up here somewhere. If he always had ice, the fact that he doesn't have uh, the fact that he doesn't have ice available at the beginning, and fire, cause fire is like whatever. Ice is like ice is the one. But I will say the the neutral definitely one of the best neutrals in the game, if not the best. V is one of the characters that just forces a reaction. It just forced. And now we get to Saber. So while I might put Saber the worst, Saber is still really, really good. She has a lot of good tools. She has Counter Super. Uh, Counter Super is definitely one of the best supers in the game for what it can do. Not the damage or anything like that, but what it can do, it can basically just shut down not only pressure, but projectiles altogether. So if I'm a Saber player and I'm fighting V-Law, and I have the bar, I can actually take away that option of the projectile. And there's nothing uh, V can do at all. Like, you have to hold it. Yeah, Avalon is really good. Her stagger game is really good. Her IED is actually pretty good. It's floaty. But it, it forces a reaction because you know it's floaty. She can uh, do two buttons in the air. But it's so floaty that she can literally shimmy you with it. It's kind of like an auto shimmy. She can easily... She's a strike throw character, like, heavily. And she can faint you because her sway back, you, if you hold the button, she can faint it. And those faints, when you add those to her pressure, it makes her pressure even more scary because you're, you're more afraid to actually try to shield her because of what could happen to you and her her uh, her 2c is actually ridiculous her range is actually just crazy in general but like her 2c is like silly her damage output is really solid uh her air throw situation is not the strongest it's not like uh arcuate where Arcue gets that uh, DBZ super, and then she gets the little, she can do left, right, high, low. Her air throw uh, situation is not that scary. You can just block it, don't shield though. You will get messed up for shielding. So I think that's the biggest thing about her. She's good. But I think just the rest of the cast outclasses her. She's very honest. If you sit there and block, there's absolutely nothing she could do. You just got to be patient. But with her in order to win, if you're fighting somebody that can block, you'll just have to put them in, uh, like, universal mind games. And what I mean by universal mind games is, like, uh, a really good strike throw game that you can literally play with anybody, but you would have to play a strike throw with her. Chronicle Chaos, hello, welcome to the stream. You've been playing Miyako and MLC Blood? That's awesome. Miyako gang, let's go. <laughs> this makes you sad. Yeah, Miyako is a number two. I think she's really strong. So yeah, this is the tier list. This could literally change tomorrow. 
That's why I say, like, it's super early. This could literally change tomorrow, though. This is just my opinion on the characters thus far.